Google decides, you know what, there's a few too many product sites out there uh, writing reviews, uh, probably the one that's passion-driven is going to make it because Google tracks much more than just the words on a page, much more than just inbound links. I mean, it's on record uh, that there are over 200 off-page factors uh, from the obvious ones, like when somebody clicks on a link uh, in my search results that I, give, uh, that I give a surfer, how long do they stay away before they come back? Um, if on a top ten, which one are they clicking on? Um, you know, there's obvious ones like that to... I mean, ones that we, you and I can't even begin to imagine. Picture, just picture hundreds of computer science PhDs whose only job it is to figure out what's the best site to give for any given query. Um, they're going to get pretty sophisticated and way beyond anything that you're going to read in any SEO book or forum. So, you know, we don't pretend to know the depth of, of SEO to that degree, and we don't need to. If you create great content, get your keywords yes, correct, on the page, not to the degree they used to have to. I mean, the, the, the old, in the old days, there were specific numbers. Now it's really get it more or less right. Don't make any glaring areas like not putting your keyword in a title. Uh, um, and build some inbound links. And then all of those other off-page criteria, as you get this great content out there, and with content 2.0, it becomes even faster. And with RSS blog it, back then, you know, a few years ago before that, Again, accelerated it. Google starts picking up more and more of these signals that people like this material. It's not only relevant to a search on lawnmowers. It is now a measure of quality. So that's what Google is going for more and more. Ultimately, in 10 or 15 years, you know, and Google's on record again as saying this, ultimately they want to have artificial intelligence where their search engine reads the page and just says, you know, that was a really, really good page on lawnmowers or anguilla or what's propagating turtles. And the, the challenge I always put to SEOs, is your site ready for that test? And, of course, I don't think there's an SEO in the world except for the whitest of white hats, you know, like Big Jill, who would say, yeah, you know what, I am ready. Uh, and SEO sites certainly are ready because they're created from a passion and knowledge viewpoint first and get the search engine right second in order of importance, but also uh, they do have to both get, you do have to get them both correct. So, yeah, that's, again, long-winded answer, it's a bit short question, but um, it depends on the person. For me, I couldn't do a site that didn't excite me. There are people for whom they can do sites that, on keywords that are profitable. Um, the next level, of course, is spamming. People who just simply, uh, basically take other people's content, slice and dice it, uh, create more fake content for inbound links, and uh, that 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 has just crossed the line, and obviously it's crossed Google's line as well. And just the shame is that they're teaching people how to do this, and ultimately those people will uh, get flushed when when Google does a serious dance on on that type of abuse. Which which I think they will. Obviously, Google wants to give the best user experience that they can. So I think what you're talking about, some of those little flash in the pans, not about building a business and building a real business that provides real value, not trying to take you know advantage of these little arbitrage opportunities. I think that's why it's absolutely key and, and why I recommend um, that people start with Site Builder because there's so much noise out there. Sometimes you can just get caught up in all of the noise and not get any work done. If you have that step-by-step -step approach that you can follow through, it just makes it so much easier and all that hard work goes in behind the scenes. Kind of like, you know, I'm a little bit of a Mac fanboy. So much goes in behind the scenes and you don't have to worry, it just works. Same sort of thing where Site Builder just works works if you follow that, that process. I think you probably see, and you touched on a few things that uh, people do, obviously chasing those little uh, get-rich-quick schemes, but you'd see a lot of new people coming online. Where do you see people making sort of the biggest mistakes early on? Are there like one or two key mistakes that you just go, if you avoid this, you'll save yourself a lot of time and heartache? Well, I'll tell you what, if you, from, from the point of view of starting a, a theme-based content site, and, you know, if you're a small business person, you don't have to create a theme-based content site. You can blog, and, you know, some people perceive us as being anti-blogging. And uh, what I would say is that if you want to create a news-oriented site, if you want to be a site that has the latest breaking developments in Anguilla, then blogging is the correct software to use. Uh, site build isn't the correct software to use. If you're a very clever person like... Uh, 
a Seth Godin, for example, a pundit, a commentator, uh, who has a lot of uh, bon mots, a lot of clever little things to come up with uh, a day, or you know, for at least one a day, then you're building your brand for your next bestseller. Blogging again is is a great is a great software because it creates the type of site where really, and Google's shown this. So there's a you know an interesting Google study. Uh, people basically read blogs. They find them. They subscribe to the RSS. They read. They come to read your latest post and they leave. And that's the way you use a blog. If you want to do a research on how to propagate a tortoise, uh, you're not going to find that in a blog. You may, I, I don't know why you would do a blog on propagating <laughs> tortoises, but if you were to do a little blurb on something that you discovered while propagating this particular species, uh, it isn't beginning to answer your overall article that you're looking for on the propagation of tortoises. So, and of course, since these are time sensitive, as you become, just like Twitter, you know, if you become inactive at Twitter, um, you're going to see as Google starts reporting, putting tweets into its search engine results, become inactive at Twitter, and you're going to fall off the map very quickly. If your blog starts going down in terms of frequency of posts, you start becoming less and less relevant. Um, develop, develop a theme-based content site, which is the correct format for most small business people. That is your single most important decision. So what's the biggest mistake? Blogging. Uh, everybody blogs because everybody else blogs. And the bottom line is, it is the wrong format. If you think of blogging as simply a format, uh, uh, another way to build a website that comes out differently. It doesn't come out in a nice, organized three tiers. Yes, you can have categories based on keywords, but those categories, when you click on them, are a bunch more posts that are related to that. There's no coherent, nice organization. Think of a very good reference book written by you with your particular expertise in an area, your particular way of writing, your particular way of getting messages across, as opposed to a bunch of magazine clippings. Which one are you going to use when you're searching the Internet for information? We subscribe to over 200 blogs. I love blogs. But we subscribe to them, keep up to date on what is the latest stuff that's coming out. You know that noise that you're talking about? The vast majority of that noise amounts to zero. But we have to follow that because every now and then something comes out that is the beginning of something big or is just a really clever little idea that we can twist and use it this way for a theme-based content site. But for the most part, it's a lot of noise. A lot of people spending a lot of time coming up with their latest thoughts or, you know, if Google does a press release, you'll see immediately 20 blogs report that Google's doing this. I mean, it's just tiring. What's the point? But for the average, remember, our, we don't really aim at Internet marketers. Most Internet marketers could really use Site Builder. But, I mean, you're, you're really great at what you do, David, but you are one in a thousand. The average person in the Internet marketing game does not do well. They'd be better off focusing on something in the real world that they enjoy doing that they know about, use Site Builder, unlearn a lot of the bad lessons that they learned, and build a real site that turns into a real business that builds long-term income.